rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I win. Oh. <laughs> You're saying it. The biggest learning moment for me on this trip is that uh, three bottles of wine at the grocery store is not enough. F minus. <laughs> I love you. Hi, I'm Jeff. And I am Lauren. And the last time you saw us, we're flying our little black capped Conyers, Kiwi and Tiki, the smallest free flyers. Well, this time we are here, back, free flying our new baby macaws. Uh, we have two. We have Nova, who is a ruby gold macaw, and we have Cosmo, who is a blue and gold macaw. And after the amazing free flight experience that we had with Kiwi and Tiki, um, you know, we were really inspired to see some of the big macaws flying on, over the dunes. Um, and so we decided to take on two little babies at the same time, with our dream being for them to fly together. Um, and so it's been a really rewarding experience and we're excited um, and we have our older guys and we have our much younger guys who we're very excited to have many years free flying with. Training the macaws has been different from the Conyers because we were starting from scratch with new baby birds. Cosmo, the blue and gold, was fledging when we got him so his nickname was Crash Bandicoot because he would run into every window or shelf or you name it in the house. He had no idea how to control his flight. Whereas Kiwi and Tiki, we were starting to train them at nearly 20 years old and they had been clipped on and off throughout their life and it was starting from a very, very different point where there was so much life experience that had to be kind of unwound and unpacked versus the little birds, it was just getting out of their way. I would say the one thing I have to add to that is Dave kind of said early on that with Kiwi and Tiki, they... They knew how to fly, they had skills, but it was really all about the training. We had to be very specific with it because they were small, um, they were older, and there was, you know, different set of dangers. But with the macaws, you know, the training actually was pretty easy to get them to do what we wanted them to do, but they had no skills because we had to teach them how to fly in the first place um, and, you know, learn all those, how to work all the little muscle groups, which Kiwi and Tiki did. So I'd say it was pretty opposite approaches. So in terms of who is more nervous and for, you know, the Conyers versus the macaws, for sure I was so nervous to take Kiwi and Tiki outdoors. Um, one, because I've had them for their whole lives, 20 years, um, I didn't know what was going to happen. One of the scariest things was when we'd have the Conyers in the house, occasionally something would happen, they'd spook and they would just, you know, go everywhere and it was not always easy to recall them and I was so scared that outside they were gonna get scared by something and then they would fly really far away and they're so small and green that they would blend in. It would be really hard to find them. Plus we were using uh, telemetry, which is a really great tool, but it's not exact, uh, at least uh, in terms of telling you exactly where to go, um, like GPS is. And with the macaws, I thought, well, you know, they're much bigger, they're louder, they're going to be brighter, more colorful, plus, um, because of their size, we'll be able to use the Marshall's GPS, which would give us that just extra insurance policy. So for me, I was a lot more scared to bring Kiwi and Tiki outside for the first time, and I was so much less nervous, having also been through the course once and seeing other students, other macaw free flight students have such great success with bird tricks. I, I was not nervous for the macaws. And I was the exact opposite. I was way more nervous for the macaws than the Conyers. I thought, worst case scenario, the Conyers go 30 yards. You know, you could just walk a spiral and you'll find them eventually. They're not going to go super far, whereas the macaws could go a mile in any direction easily. We've definitely seen that in the past. And also, I guess on some level, like Kiwi and Tiki were, you know, your babies. The macaws were kind of our babies. So kind of letting your baby outside to do something big and scary and dangerous, or I guess for them it's just natural, but for us it's big and scary and dangerous. Was, uh, was a little bit of an exercise in restraint for, for, for me, <laughs> not for them. <laughs> yeah, I was 10 times more scared. I mean, uh, we were driving out to the dry lake bed site, and uh, I'm driving, and Dave's in the passenger seat, and he turns the camera on, and he goes, So, how are you feeling? All right, so how are you feeling? And I'm sitting like, I'm trying not to crash the car. I'm ready. <laughs>
<laughs> I was like pretty chill about it. All right, Lauren, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. <laughs> We are now at the second location because it was getting a little windy up higher. And Nova sit out for just a couple of minutes here, get used to the new surroundings, and then do speed of beat. Day one was incredibly successful. We did find that both Cosmo Nova controlled themselves. They didn't take these really long flights. There seemed to be some hesitation on Cosmo's part with not wanting to take these longer flights. He seemed to be a little uneasy with the new environment. And that's okay. It's really important actually that these birds learn how to self-regulate and not push themselves so far that they're always hitting failure. It appears that these two macaws are going to be slowly building their confidence and the skills will follow, which if you've taken our flight course, you know that that is something I really preach and it's to not build those, oh, and mute your phone, Dave, uh, but it's to not try to push the skills too far too fast and really slowly build up with the confidence and those skills will follow. The biggest challenge, and this is still a little bit true, is because we started with babies, um, you know, one of the, the things that's most important that I learned from Bertrix is that all the foundations have to be there. Diet, sleep, diet is a huge part of it. And so having baby birds, getting the diet right um, has been tricky, getting them from hand feeding and trying to transition them onto a really good healthy diet that's a, you know, a training diet. Um, that's been really hard. There's no manual out there um, and every bird is different. You know, we've learned from Bertrix certainly that um, you know, a blue and gold macaw can be, you know, this weight or this weight it really depends specifically on your bird. So it was really up to us to like find that optimal weight range and, and diet. And also they're, they're going at different rates in terms of what they're eating. I think it must've been the first week we had the macaws. We kind of have a C shaped first floor of our house with a stairwell in the middle. And they flew from one end of the C all the way to the other in week one. And I said, well, we ran out of space instantly. So Lauren actually ended up finding an outdoor batting net, uh, very wide, very tall. So they had plenty of room relative to our house to stretch their wings and, uh, and experience wind. It's in a valley. So there's other birds, there's wind, there's airplanes, there's cars. It was really good for a desensitization as well as a exposure to wind and the elements. One day we brought them out, it was almost 40 degrees and it was pretty mm. cold. Yep. Other days it was 80 degrees and really hot. So it was a good way to uh, get them a little more used to feeling some of the outdoor elements. Good morning, it is day two. Oh, sorry for the lighting. Super excited to get Cosmo Nova outside and today we've got a special treat or surprise. We are inviting Heather out who is going to be flying her two blue and golds as well as her gray and her galah so that we can start to layer in distractions and really build upon the success we had yesterday. The winds are gonna be a little bit higher but fingers crossed for another awesome day.
Without Bertrix, I wouldn't have had the confidence, I think, to teach two macaws how to fly confidently outside. You know, I would never have been able to catch all those little things and apply the right lesson at the right moment to be able to set our guys up for success. Jeff and Lauren's birds did phenomenal. They really progressed. We didn't have a single missed return flight. We didn't have any of those. We had just an awesome overall experience. I cannot wait to see the progress when Lauren and Jeff take the macaws and Kiwi and Tiki, who also got a little bit of fun time playing outside. I cannot wait to see how they do on our trip here in just a couple of weeks over on the sand dunes and hopefully lots of wind and just a blast. For instance, one of, one of the things that Dave kind of said early on when we were like struggling to figure out how are we going to get Cosmo to fly without crashing into stuff, he was just like, why don't you try putting him on the table? Right. And I was well, he like, he likes the perch. Right. And I, it was just like, it was a, this like very simple thing, but it was just enough of a motivator to get him to go at a moment we were prepared to catch him so he didn't crash and then build his confidence. And just the simple concept of, of like, you know, there's skills and confidence. And if you build confidence first, the skills will naturally follow. If I didn't have Birdtrix's experience, um, through the you know, 15, 20 years that they've been coaching all different types of people with all different types of birds, different ages, um, in different situations. And I know, you know, Jamie and Dave said, do you need to take the course over again? And for me, the answer was a clear yes, because it was a very different scenario. And I just felt I had more confidence knowing that they were gonna catch the mistakes. Um, they were gonna be able to coach us, probably not as like, uh, as closely monitoring, right, as the first time, because we did learn so much the first time with Kiwi and Tiki, but I think having their oversight gave me the confidence to be able to, you know, push our guys further faster than I would have if we had tried to do it alone. Today is gonna be a little something more.
damn, I don't know if Lauren and Jeff had more fun or <laughs> if Cosmo and Noah did. So I think the, the biggest learning experience for me, building off of what Lauren said with how sometimes we hold our birds back, is how much other birds can mm. teach. Again, as humans and trainers, we can do a lot of things and flying is not one of them. All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. So having other birds that are good flyers and experienced flyers is such an accelerant. The biggest joy that I have gotten from this trip is just watching them fly together.